This is the story of Hector and a baking contest known as the East Harlem Dessert Derby. It all started in Chef Von Frugu's restaurant. His cooking was being reviewed by the famous food critic, Bones McDuff. Anything else, Mr. McDuff? Now, what usually follows the main course? That would be dessert. <laughs> Wise decision, sir. We are walking on it. The raspberry cake is not working. Uh, try the apricot soufflé. Give him the Van Frugel Nuttel Strudel. Yeah. Come, come, Hector, pick me a winner. Eddie, <laughs> bitte schön, pick me a winner. Yeah. Ja. Please, pick me a winner. Please. Come, come. Chef Van Frugel, the poodle loves your Nuttel Strudel. Don't off. It's not a puddle who loves my strudel, it's a bulldog who loves my strudel, yeah? <laughs> und schnell, schnell, we haven't got a time. Oh, it's the strudel. Oh, Hector, eat up. <laughs> Your dessert, sir. The chef's finest creation. The Von Frugel Noodle Strudel. Absolute heaven! Another four star review! I don't see how he does it time after time. Ah. Oh. Eddie, a four legged gourmet has done it again! Yeah! What impeccable taste buds! Who would believe that a bulldog has the taste buds of a gourmet chef? Yeah! <laughs> My name is Eddie. I live in New York City. East Harlem, to be exact. Here's where I go to school, PS72. School's tough, but it's a lot more fun ever since I got a teacher named Miss Tolliver. Miss Tolliver makes us keep a journey. And I want you to write about what you learned today. I took the idea and ran with it. Check Hi, Eddie. Come on in. Right next to that rectangle is a whole bunch of triangles. My mom has lots of names for this mess, but I call it my files. My Aunt Rosa won the dessert derby. The year before, Vincent took home the trophy. And then there's Aunt Ida. I'm back. Aunt Ida! It's me, my little titty girl. How are you? Eddie? And. Oh, I know, no hugs because you're what, like 11 now, right? Sometimes sisters can in the mushy. But every year, Aunt Ida visits us to compete in the dessert derby. And every year, 
She loses. So, sis, what you got planned for the dessert derby this year? Oh, you'll find out soon enough. Oh, come on. It's not like, what was it last year? Broccoli pie or, or no, no, sardine souffle. It was prune pudding pie. Oh, yeah. You may have won last year, little sister, but watch out, because this year I got my bacon down to an exact science. Well, I think it's gonna take just a little bit more than science for you to beat me. I thought it was a good time to bring up Hector and his gourmet taste buds. You, you gotta, gotta be, be kidding, kidding Eddie. Eddie. Hector couldn't care less what he eats. If it doesn't move, he'll eat it. You got quite an imagination there, Eddie. As a matter of fact, if it does move, he'll probably eat that too. But you know what? Maybe Hector could help you. Thanks, but no thanks. See, I, I don't need any help this year. Especially not from a dog. It's all right here, Eddie. Science. They didn't believe me. So I decided to tell Vincent. A dog? Nah. A cat, maybe. But definitely not a dog. Let me tell you something, Eddie. It takes years of study, cultivation... So nobody believed me about Hector. ...to acquire a gourmet palate such as mine. Anyway, things were cooking in Miss Tolliver's class. Today I have a little problem for you. Oh. Now. If I was just to randomly pick an M&M out of this jar, what color candy would come out? We were stumped. How could we solve it? So Miss Tolliver gave us a simpler problem to solve. Instead of counting all of these candies, we're going to count and organize what's in here. So just open up your bag, OK, so you can begin making your bar graph. So we each got a bag of M&Ms, not to eat, but to make a graph. You're going to take the M&Ms and you're going to organize the colors into the colors. No, you can't eat them, Mr. Funny. <laughs> and our horizontal axis is colors and your vertical axis is numbers. Okay, let's get in the seats, guys. Now, based on your graph, then what color would you say is going to come up most frequently? The red was the most. I think it's going to be brown. Blue. Yellow. Red. 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 Red and yellow. Oh, boy. In order for us to really come up with a solution to this problem, your tables are going to make one big bar graph. So each table made a big graph. We counted our colors. Then Miss Tolliver made a chart on the board. Okay, we're going to record information in the form of a chart. For reds, 19, 18 yellows, 10 green, 27 reds, and 4 orange. OK, very good. On the board, I now have a chart. What are some of the interpretations that we can make from just looking at the chart? We looked at our data and discovered that the chart had more reds than any other color. There's a lot of reds. Good, OK. So this chart is very, very helpful. Now, what color would come out from my jar? Come on, Victoria. Come on out. You can look. Close your eyes, too. Now pick. Hold it up, yeah. sir. Everybody can see. Now what color do we get? Red. So we learned how charts and graphs can help pick a winner. After school, I went home and asked Aunt Ida to tell me her secret recipe. Okay, Eddie, I'll tell you, but you gotta promise not to tell anybody, especially not Androsa. My secret ingredient this year is lima beans. First it was broccoli, then prunes, then lima beans. Mm, my lima bean peak pie will tower above the rest. Aunt Otto was headed for last place again. Okay. I got some shopping to do. Every fruit and vegetable that is grown in the United States, we sell. 
My name is Matthew Dorigo. I'm a wholesale fruit and vegetable distributor in New York City. Well, this is where all of the fruits and vegetables get shipped into and sold and redistributed. In the apple department here at Dorigo, we sell a lot of apples, and these are brand new. Just came off the trees, fresh, crunchy, nice. Bobby Rice, I'll buy some victories. Mr. Rice talks to my brother Michael, buys and sells, they argue, they get along very well, though. How many of them you want? We keep charts and tables of our inventory. You gotta keep an inventory control. For example, you call California, and you say, okay, I need strawberries today, and you argue a little bit, talk about the price, then you agree and you order a thousand boxes of strawberries and then you have to put that into your chart. It's necessary, you gotta have it. Because you can't remember everything. What's exciting is selling them all. When you get that customer on the phone and he buys 672 boxes of strawberries, whoa! You're doing your job, you're getting the product in and you're getting it out. And have fun while we're doing it too. That's the way it works. Nothing but the best ingredients for my dessert. Okay. Do I have everything? I got my timer. I got my charts. I got my lima beans. Okay. Let's get to work. And so the baking began. Temperature, timing. Eat at your own risk. Digging it, huh, Hector? Mmm. Not bad. It's actually pretty good. Maybe Eddie was right about Hector. Hector? You like it? You really, 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 really like it? What did I use? Was it B or C? Oh no! Oh no, was it D? No, 10 ounces. No, no, 8 ounces. 40 minutes at 425. Oh no! 
What was the temperature? Was it? Okay, no, no, relax. It's gonna be okay, Ida, because it's all right. Yeah, I got it, I got it! Okay, Hector, the lima bean pie will rise and fall again. <laughs> Then it was time for the dessert derby. Welcome to the 10th annual East Harlem Dessert Derby. Thank you, thank you. And for our 10th anniversary, we have a very special guest judge. It is with great pleasure that I introduce the well-respected restaurant critic, Bones McDuff. Thanks, Vincent. Thank you, Bowles. Great to be here. Good to see you. Well, let's not waste any time. Let the judging begin. And for our first entry, Mrs. Castelli's Chunky Chocolate Cake. Next, we have Rose's Melon Mountain Muffins. Next entry, my very own strawberry skyscraper sleigh. And now for our final entry, Ida's mm. Lima Bean Mud Pie. Oh my Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I believe that Mr. McDuff has picked a winner. The envelope, please! And the winner of the 10th annual East Harlem Dessert Derby is Vince Ida? <laughs> Lima Bean Mud Pie. 
that recipe. Gotta have it! You must give me that recipe! Please, give it to me! No, you want me to no, beg? No. I gotta have the recipe! So Aunt Ida finally won the dessert derby. And even though it looked gross, it actually tasted really good. Like Mom always says, you can't judge a book by its cover. I guess all of Aunt Ida's charts and graphs paid off, with a little help from Hector. Anyway, time to close the files and grab myself another blob of that award-winning lima bean mud pie. I have a feeling tomorrow is gonna be a big day. You're on the air. Dog food! That's what I think about most of the desserts in this town. But if you want a doggone good dessert, get yourself over to the East Harlem Community Center this weekend for their annual carnival and dessert derby. And be sure to check out Ida's Lima Bean Mud Pie, because it's one of the few desserts in this town worth barking about. I am Bones McDuff. And remember, if it doesn't tickle your taste buds, it's just dessert for your doggy. <laughs>